It's always scary to be trying to do something that could result in adverse effects to a listed species. But I also think it's scary to sit back and wait and do nothing. You know, in my mind, I think what we did last fall is it's kind of an unprecedented thing. We haven't, nobody's ever really gone into alpacs and, and been able to burn them with some scientific data to back it up. It was a humbling honor to be a part of that and knowing, knowing that it could really be a game changer for fire management. In the small way that we could, this, this could change the entire Mexican Spotted Owl Recovery Plan. As part of the Four Forest Restoration Initiative, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the U.S. Forest Service are looking at the effects of prescribed fire on Mexican spotted owls in the southwest. Specifically, they're restoring fire in five occupied owl protected activity centers, or PACs, on the Coconino National Forest in Arizona. Fire crews burned the PACs in the fall of 2017 and wildlife biologists are now monitoring the sites, collecting data on owl occupancy and reproduction, as well as pre and post fire vegetation. The Mexican spotted owl is listed as a threatened species under the Endangered Species Act. It was listed by the Fish and Wildlife Service in 1993. First recovery plan was done in 1995 and we completed the revision of the recovery plan in 2012. We know that managing for that species or those several species that are listed on the Endangered Species Act has been a big driver for what we've done in, in land management. There are also other species out there and there's the ecosystem as a whole. So hopefully one of the things that can come out of it would be a really good scientific based data set on the balance of species specific management versus ecosystem management in those areas. Mexican spotted owls, their range covers the southwest, so from Colorado and Utah, south to Mexico, and then a small piece of western Texas. They live in two main types of habitat in the southwest. Um, forested systems, like mixed conifer and ponderosa pine oak, and then slick rock canyons, like Grand Canyon or Canyonlands. Within the forested ecosystem, they occur in areas that were historically fire-adapted systems. Ponderosa pine is a fire dependent ecosystem. It needs fire, that's how it thrives. And without it, it's going to be very unhealthy. And we've seen that with the large fires since 1990 in Arizona. We've seen an escalation in the amount of large fires. When I first started fighting fire here back in the mid 90s, right when fires started getting large, it was unheard of to have a 20,000 acre fire in the timber. And now we've had over 500,000 acre fires in the same timber. So things have changed. We've changed the landscape to the point where we need to reintroduce fire into everywhere that has ponderosa pine. It's, it really needs it and it thrives when it gets at regular intervals. So, you know, if we can get fire back on the, on the landscape in the ecosystem once every five to 10 years, it's gonna be beneficial to the landscape and to the communities that are with inside the ponderosa pine fuel type as well. It benefits everybody, really. When we revised the recovery plan in 2012, we really wanted to make it clear that as part of that, we wanted to see management happen in these protected activity centers that we've identified where we know we have owls nesting and roosting. So one of the things that we worked into that was the development of management experiments. And one of the first projects that came up that we were able to design a management experiment for was the Four Forest Restoration Initiative. And under that project, we are looking at a subset of packs where we are just doing burning in those. And then we will see what the response in terms of occupancy, reproduction, and vegetative changes are. And then we are also looking at a set of packs where we are doing mechanical thinning followed by burning in those areas. We're hoping to replicate that management experiment not only here on the Coconino for the Four Forest Restoration Initiative, but also as part of the Flagstaff Watershed Protection Project and also as part of the Sacramento Watershed Protection Project on the Lincoln National Forest. We went into the year with a, uh, a pretty large target and a lot of that target for prescribed fire was in alpacs. We, we have some, uh, some reference alpacs for the four forest restoration initiative 
and we needed to burn them all basically the same time frame. So we knew it was going to be a challenge. We haven't burned in alpacs with prescribed fire ever. I don't know anybody that has. Uh, so this was a first go. And on top of that, twofold, it was a very long fire season. We burnt all these things at night, which really benefited us because of the fuel moisture. So that added another layer of planning on resource commitment of having the fire staffed during the day, another contingent at night, being able to keep a full cycle for a couple days until things calmed down and the burns were at a place where we could just go into a patrol status. But through all of that was a risk management discussion. What kind of risk are we assuming as an organization? What kind of risk are we assuming as an agency from a political standpoint, from a, a public, um, public perception standpoint? What kind of physical risk are we, are we uh, exposing people to by doing this? What kind of future risks are we mitigating or are we passing on by not doing this? So there were some pretty robust risk management discussions throughout this whole planning of these prescribed fires. The planning cycle was uh, at least a couple years before we ever put a torch on the ground, before we ever implemented that. So the planning cycles compared to other prescribed fires was a lot longer and it was a lot more in depth, mostly because of um, the Mexican spotted owl study. What I would like to see out of the study, one way or the other, is some good verifiable data on either confirming what we've been doing or maybe looking at some changes to what we've been doing of changes specifically would be allowing natural fire impacts and then additionally allowing prescribed fire in into those into those mexican spotted owl packs when it comes to the implementation we really haven't had that cross-agency interaction like we have with this. This was the first time in prescribed fire history that I've been here that we've had representatives from Fish and Wildlife Service on site of a prescribed fire with us. We knew it was a priority for the Fish and Wildlife Service. It was a priority for our forest to try to get this done. And it's really good for long-term monitoring for us to try to get these things done in the time that was we had to do it. So the Fish and Wildlife Service and the wildlife biologists can continue to monitor these blocks and hopefully eventually maybe take the owl off of the endangered species list. Having this study going on that could open up that toolbox for us, allow us to use that tool to help manage this ecosystem is honestly a game changer for, for fire management. Fire, it's not a precise tool, it's not a scalpel. It's, it's definitely more of a blunt tool, but it is a great tool. It's probably the cheapest way to treat acres. We're really fortunate in this area to have some really amazing fire managers who are willing to take risks and do some things differently. And so this was a great opportunity to take advantage of some amazing local expertise our hope is that we'll have some better guidelines and recommendations to give fire managers when they do burn protected activity centers that will help us maintain those key habitat components. I think also because we are racing a little bit against a clock in terms of things changing rapidly on the landscape, we're also hoping that we can start enacting more change across this landscape so we can maintain these forests that this bird and many other wildlife species depend upon longer into the future.